everyone, this is Young Tractor Joy. So this is the music that we're gonna write on today. Subscribers are working on the C major scale, one octave scale on G string. So, and wondering how one could keep nice sound after fifth position, and also how one could have nice shifting while keeping things in tune. Good question. So, I think we can all relate to that. We um, sooner or later or ongoingly struggle with such problem. So there are a couple of things that I think could um, improve or solve such problem instantly. When it comes to shifting, um, when you're having a hard time, see if you can pick the right fingering. If we can pick easy fingering during the shifting. You see we have these three long fingers and one short pinky. So when you shift, it is a good idea to use those three long fingers, which you have. Um, they have more muscle and longer, so therefore it's a little easier to control. Whereas pinky is the weakest finger. So try to avoid uh, shifting with pinky, which often um, the traditional way of doing that one, C major, one octave scale on G string, a lot of values do like the come down the fourth finger. One can practice. I mean, it's always a good idea to um, practice every single finger so that it um, you can extend its capacity. That's all good. However, if you are um, if you're interested playing nice and clean, you might want to pick the right fingering that raises the chance of you playing in tune and nice. Yeah, and it's also a good idea for you to experience how it feels like when it's in tune while being relaxed by using a little more easier finger such as second, third or first finger. So I suggest to pick the right fingering. So especially when you come down, try not to come with a pinky, rather choose these middle fingers or sometimes first finger is okay. So um, this is a finger that I suggest that make it um, easier and nicer sound like this. solve a little difficult things when it comes sound, smooth shifting. Now let me show you what traditional fingerings uh, are when it comes C major one octave scale on, on G strings, which is this one, one, two, one, two, and then it goes all the way to four. train your pinky here your highest note which is already hard to play how to make a speak well is using the weakest finger pinky weak which is weakest finger which is the pinky so because it's a weakest finger and it's harder to pick, play nicer sound not only that when you shift with a traditional fingering you're shifting with a fourth finger down again again for the same thing using the weakest finger for the difficult one so that would not be, which is So I don't think that's a good idea um, So I suggest that you try this fingering which is One, two, three, one, two, three. So you're using a strong finger for the difficult note which is extremely high position down with a longer finger which is three two. okay so that should already uh, ease, ease things up yeah and then 
when it comes to uh, keeping nice sound or getting nice sound in whether it's high position G or E or anything, it has to do finding the right, right sounding spot. Sounding spot or sounding point is of each string where it sounds the best. Normally the sounding point of G string is near fingerboard here. Oops. Like that. But as you get higher, as you get higher position, because the distance from the bow to the note gets narrower, your as you get higher, your sounding point gets also a little closer to the fingerboard. Uh bridge. <laughs> Again. So this is sounding point on G string normally when you're playing maybe first, second, third position. But as soon as you hit fourth position, the sounding point of G string gets closer to the bridge. So like this, as you get higher, yeah, and that also should fix to for you to have a nicer sound like this. That's normal sounding point, which is a little closer to the fingerboard. Now as you get higher, bring the bow a little closer to the bridge. but then you're gonna lose a sound. So close enough, just find it where it sounds the best. And then remember, G string can take quite a bit of weight. So be free uh, to put a little more weight. And as you get lower, bring back to a little closer to the uh, fingerboard. Make sure your bow is in the right, right sounding point. Then now, when you shift, make sure you don't let go all hand all at once. So when you shift, whether it's going up or down, there should be some, one of the finger should be still quite active. I mean like this. Let's say you're shifting from third position to the fifth. Here, the note right before shifting, whether it's shifting up or down, has to be good on the string while the hand gets, your left hand should be unlocked. Meaning like this. The second finger should stay while in, but you have to unlock your left hand so that you can slide it up easily. Now, I tell my students to Stick your wrist tiny bit out to unlock your left hand so that you don't get stiffly done but a little unlock and then it's easier to move. Unlock. Allow this one stay good on the string but again unlock your wrist so that you can slide it easily while shifting. And when you shift down, the same thing goes. Right, a note right before the shifting says good on the string, but unlock your wrist, meaning see if you can stick out a tiny bit. Then with a the thumb goes a little before your left hand when you shift down. And then unlock your wrist, see if you can stick your wrist out, just to make sure you can slide it down with a relaxed left hand. Yeah, so this is a little skill because um, by unlocking your wrist, by st sticking tiny bit, you're allowing your left hand to be relaxed. Therefore, you're going to be able to shift it in a nicer way and healthier way. The common problem that people have when they shift, they just try to move same way with the same strength and then same tension, which will slow down and which also make um, the shifting jerky. Yeah. Um, of course, there are many things that can be um, studied in this simple uh, C major one octave scale, but um, I hope this gives you an idea. And now, um, oh, before I forget, when you're playing um, G string, 
make sure that you, you tilt your violin a bit this way so that you can reach the G string. So now you could just keep it like that, but then your right arm has to work much, much more. So try to work with the both arms. So bring your violin a little towards center, tilt it so that you can reach G string. Yeah? I don't know. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and share my videos. Hope to see you again.